What's up everyone, welcome back to my channel ReefRx. Hope you guys are all doing good. Today I'm gonna to give you an overview of my innovative marine 40 gallon tank. I don't really do a lot of videos on this tank. I'm not really sure why, but I've had some requests to uh, show this tank off a bit more. So here we are doing that today. As always, if you guys enjoy my content, please be sure to like, share, and subscribe to my channel. It helps support the channel and it reaches more viewers like yourself. So let's get into it. So this is an Innovative Marine 40 gallon tank. Um, I purchased this tank used and I purchased this tank for $200 for the tank, the stand, and a skimmer. So can't really beat that deal. So the tank was in good condition. When I started this tank, I, uh, I kind of already knew in my head what I wanted to do with it. I wanted to start with all dry rock. Um, I had a lot of issues when I first started this hobby with my other tank, not the water box, the one I had before. So I really learned from my mistakes. So this tank was the tank I was not gonna make the mistakes with. So started with all dry rock, let the dry rock cycle for like probably two or three months, put the rock in the tank, let the, let the tank cycle for like another four or five months because I really wasn't sure what I wanted to do with the tank at the time. So I kind of just let it be and let it, you know, give it that time to mature and stuff like that. So I decided, hey, let's do an anemone tank. So it, that's what we got today. So I have two clownfish in here. You may have just seen one the minute ago at the top. I shut the flow off just so you guys can see uh, what it looks like, all the anemones. Um, so two clowns, I have a dotty back, which I just saw in the corner, but it's already disappeared. And I have a six line wrasse. Oh, there's a dotty in the way back. You probably, how oh, about this? There we go, he's gone, but. He's in there, um, six line wrasse, several uh, emerald crabs to help with the bubble algae and some snails and stuff like that. Oh, I also have this, uh, this zoa uh, colony here. I took this from my other tank because I kind of ran out of room. So I just threw it in here for now. Um, but yeah, we'll talk about uh, the equipment that I run on this tank. So this is an all in one tank. So everything is in the back chamber here. Um, I have a Tunes DC skimmer, which works really good. It's obviously it fits in there perfectly. Um, and this is the controller, which is adjustable. So you can adjust the um, air control on that. So I, I really like that. I wasn't crazy about it at first. Um, and I'm not really sure why, but I think probably because there was a lack of maintenance. And so I thought it wasn't working good. So that's kind of my fault. Um, but the more I have had it, the more I like it. So yeah, got the Tunes skimmer in here. Um, I have a Tunes Osmolator 3155 for my auto top off. So this thing works great. Um, I like it because it has the dual sensors. I have it in both my tanks. So it has the optical sensor and then it has this float sensor. So you hear that alarm going off. That's when the level's high. Um, so this works really good. And um, I use one of these trigger systems, five gallon ATOs. Uh, on my other tank, I have a 10 gallon, so these work great. So this evaporates about at the same rate. My other tank, 10 gallon evaporates, so I will fill them up both at the same time. Uh, for a power head, I have the Vortec MP10. This thing is awesome. I really like the Vortex. I also use the Vortex on my other tank. I have two MP40s on that tank. Um, I like to be able to do like the random flow and adjust it and everything like that. So super happy with that. Um, I do have uh, the whole Neptune system set up over here. So for Neptune equipment on here, I have the energy bar, obviously, as you can see. I have an auto fish feeder, which I don't use unless I am away. Um, otherwise, it just sits there idle. And then I also have a dose unit hooked up onto this. So I'm dosing all for reef, which I dose to both tanks. I run one cord that comes all the way in the back here, or I should say one hose, and connects with that splitter. And then I also dose magnesium to this tank too as needed because sometimes it gets a little bit low. So I don't really do water changes on this tank since I have the Alpha Reef. I did do a water change like two weeks ago, maybe three weeks ago. That was just to help with a lot of the detritus that was in there. Um, there's still a lot in there, but to help with some of that. But prior to that, I hadn't done one for like nine months. So it was like in January I did it. So. And uh, I don't test the nitrates or phosphates in this tank. I can almost guarantee you, um, if I were to test them, they would be sky high. Everything's happy in this tank. You know, no need to test it. I'm more about stability. And uh, yeah, so I just test the, you know, the alkalinity, magnesium and calcium, but that I have my Trident test right here. 
So, and uh, so right now I have, I, well last I counted, I have 10 anemones in this tank. And uh, they just keep splitting, so that's, it's, I, I really like the anemones. And then, oh, one more thing I have, I do have a refugium on this tank. So um, here's my refugium light, and I just cut out some of this black covering that goes over the back here. And I have like one of these media baskets. So I put some um, like fleece or whatever you want to call this stuff, like a filter pad, I guess. I don't know what it's called. I don't really, I have no idea. But I put that stuff in there and then I have the fuge in there. So it goes into, uh, it's this stuff right here. This is what I use to cut, to put in for the filter pads or whatever. Like, like I said, I have no idea what it's called, but that's what I use for that. Um, just a regular old heat glass heater in here. I do have it hooked up to an Inkbird, which is also hooked up to my um, energy bar. So like I have, you could almost say triple redundancy because this has the internal thing and then I got the Inkbird and then I got the, uh, the energy bar programmed. So triple redundancy, I'm all about redundancy, especially in case something fails when it comes to the heater. I mean, you can lose a tank really fast. Thank God, knock on wood, it's never happened to me, but I know a lot of people out there can't say the same. So I try to learn from my mistakes, but I also try to learn from other people's mistakes as well. Um, and oh, for the, uh, the other thing I really like on this, for the sump return pump, I have a Mighty Jet pump, which is really, really cool. So it's on a feed mode right now, just because I shut it off so you can see from the top. Um, so it's on the feed mode, but uh, it's super quiet. I used to have an AC pump, which was super loud and you could hear it like, it was very annoying. It was just a loud rumble. But this Mighty Jet pump is like whisper quiet, quiet. you don't even hear it. And the other important thing I should talk about is my lighting. So Hydra AI 26 HD lights. Um, so I have one of those on there and I use the Hydra arm to hold that. Definitely need some cleaning up there. Obviously I've been lacking some maintenance up there. So that'll actually be a good weekend project. You don't really look up there. I mean, unless you're, I guess, putting your camera up there then you realize how bad it is. So um, I do try to hit these lights every couple of months with like vacuum and air duster just to clean them out, um, just to prolong the life of them. But obviously you can see I've neglected this one. So gonna add that to my weekend list. And then, I mean, as far as equipment goes, I think that's it. So yeah, this tank is pretty self-sustained. I just feed it, uh, I feed it live. Sorry, not live, I feed it frozen every single night. Um, it's my homemade frozen. So if you haven't seen that video, check out that video. I'll put a card up here in the corner. Um, so I make, made my own fish food and I feed this to both of my tanks. Everything has been thriving ever since I started feeding this stuff. So works really good. It's a good combination of all different sorts of things. So fish love it, corals love it, keeps everyone happy. Um, and yeah, so like that's about it for this tank. So um, hopefully someday when I get a house, I'll have like everything plumbed into like one sump so I don't have to worry about um, dosing different tanks and having double equipment, like, you know, stuff like that. So. Um, Hopefully that day will be soon in the next year or so. Um, if you guys have any questions about this tank, please be sure to leave them in the comments and I'll get back to you. I really hope you guys enjoyed this video and I'll talk with you guys soon. Thanks so much for watching.